Mark Twain Riverboat in, I believe, Churchill? Hey everybody, I'm okay, this is Cigar Vlog. Alright, so Mark Twain Riverboat is, as you can see very clearly, a barber pole style of cigar, meaning there's actually two different leaves used for the wrapper. Looks to be a Connecticut and a Maduro. So this should be relatively interesting. Especially since the last Mark Twain I had had a rather unusual flavor. First Mark Twain I had kind of reminded me a little bit of like the artisanal soap aisle. As in the, uh, it didn't have a soapy flavor per se, but it just had that, you know, it had that kind of clean exotic smell that you find when you walk into, you know, artisanal soap. I have no idea if this is going to do that, but that's why we find out. Now you have to be kind of careful with barber poles because you've got two different wrappers that are two different thicknesses. They can be particularly tricky when it comes to burn. Hmm. Oh, right off the bat. I think I got my light okay. Hmm. A little sweet. Clean, a little clean tobacco. I want to say it's a little cedary. That is interesting. Interesting in a good way. Okay, so straight out the gate, this one's kind of hit me with a vibe that uh, this is definitely not going to be your ordinary cigar. Well, there's several flavors going on just straight out of the gate that I, hmm, yeah, pin pin pinpointing individual things, kind of difficult. Okay. When I say that's a good thing because I mean there's a yeah, I'm gonna say that's a good thing because it means there's a lot of things going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this down to the first inch, fix uh, whatever screwball I uh, managed to do with the light, and uh, hopefully see if anything starts to stand out. Okay. So far, just like the previous Mark Twain, this one striking me as a little weird. Try the retro hill. Hello, Echo! Oh yes, welcome back to the Tunnel of Love. <clears throat> or in this case, the Tunnel of... Um... Spider crap. Well, oh, anyway. First bit of the retro hill on this one, weirdly enough, reminded me of corn. Like, corn tortilla, corn... Just corn husk, just that corn smell. Very, very odd. And of course, subsequent puffs away on it and uh, hits of the red rail almost started coming off a little buttery. There's just enough of a breeze blowing through here that's kind of blowing the smoke out. <laughs> it's like, we'll get the flavor, but it's kind of weirded me out. I can't see the smoke. The book so far has been actually kind of wispy on this one. Yeah, like uh, that last Rachel Hill. Straight graham cracker. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's 100% graham cracker. <laughs> Okay, so the overall mouth flavor I'm getting off of this, a little sweet, a little earthy, some clean tobacco, like no spice at all, which I actually find it kind of nice. But...
There's also some weird quality in there. I want to say it's almost vegetal in nature. Not quite like candela veggie, but you know, it's got there's something odd in a very interesting way, which is kind of a weird way to say that. Just there's a flavor that I can't quite put my finger on. It's, it's there. I don't quite know what it is yet. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this down to the halfway point. I'm probably going to yank the band too, but just because it's kind of huge. Interestingly enough, though, there's actually uh, quotes from uh, Sam Clemens, who I know as Mark Twain, on the band. <laughs> so that's always a nice little touch. Not to mention a big ass riverboat on the side. I don't know if that shows up very well or not, but anywho, I'm going to go ahead and get this down to the halfway point and give an update from there. Uh, I'm also going to keep an eye on the burn because, like I said, like you can cook, you know, obviously this is a barber pole style. You got a natural and a maduro. These are going to be two thicknesses of wrapper, which means they're going to burn at two different rates. And you can kind of see a little bit here. It's kind of not wanting to really cooperate and play nice with each other a little bit. So we'll see how that turns out and if this turns into a mess of relights or touch ups and such. Anyway. Okay, nowhere near the halfway point yet, but the ash just decided to come off. And I kind of want to attribute that a little bit to a certain amount of breeze coming through here, but also, more to the point, I've been starting to see a little bit, of, little bit of a burn issue with this. It seems like, sure enough, the natural wrapper wants to burn a little quicker than the Maduro does. Now, if it keeps staying on the same side, then that's probably just going to make me screw up the light. But if it kind of follows that Maduro around, well, that could be a little bit more telling. Anyway, just a quick little mini update there. <laughs> On to the halfway point. Okay. As you can clearly see, the burn screw up is following the Maduro. So this basically, uh, illustrates one of the problems with the barber pole style is the fact that you have two different wrappers which are two different leaves which means they are going to burn at different rates see so how that Connecticut style burns faster than the Maduro you're going to be making a lot of touch-ups with this one also it is stupidly bright out here so anyway we're almost to the halfway point I'm going to go ahead and give a touch up, get a little bit more time on this one, and give a proper update in a couple of minutes. Well, turns out, after the ash flopped off in the touch up, it is at the halfway point. So, current thoughts, you kind of have to double puff on this one, especially if you want to keep a somewhat consistent burn, but like previously stated, it is a barber pole, those two different wrappers are going to burn at two different rates, so just be cautious of that and uh, keep a lighter handy. Flavor wise, I originally said there was no spice. Turns out there actually is a little bit after you get past that first inch. You get a little bit of a, I want to say almost like a spiced apple thing. There's just a little spice, kind of a clovish, um, cardamomy, kind of, you know, sweet spice, kind of hits you in the back of the throat. Overall, though, been a little sweet, clean tobacco, touch of earthiness, a little bitter, in a good way. Roger Hill has been just kind of mirroring that overall sensa uh, sensation, sense profile thing, you know. Started off kind of almost corn like buttery, and now it's just uh, kind of mirroring the mouth flavors as well, so. No? Don't actually pay attention to it. That's still a straight graham cracker. Yeah. Yeah, there's still graham cracker, All right? And a little lighter, but uh, otherwise, pretty much consistent. Just kind of meandering around, puffing and talking, and I'm in the middle of a field. It's probably not a good thing, <laughs> especially because there's a lot of prairie dog holes around here. Lifted ankle much? Okay. So anyway, 
The biggest issue I've noticed so far with this is the fact that it is, in fact, a barber pole. Otherwise, it kind of maintains a little bit of that kind of oddball, out of the ordinary flavor that uh, you'd find in a typical Mark Twain. As in, if you're not really comparing it to, like, say, a spiced apple, you're probably going to notice it's going to have that kind of artisanal soap kind of feel. Which is not a bad thing, because those usually smell amazing. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and keep an eye on this burn line, considering the fact that it is definitely screwing up following that Maduro. I'm going to get this down to the uh, last bit of the nub here, try not to burn my fingers, and give a final update from there. I'd say it looks like a pretty good nub to me. Alright, so far, we're getting to the point where all the flavors just kind of wash out, like every cigar does. Flavors have been pretty consistent. Every so often I'll have that one odd puff that has like a weird caramel note to it. But overall, flavors have been kind of almost like a spiced apple spice. So sweet. And I think it's that spiced apple kind of spiel. It kind of has that um, artisanal soap kind of thing. And you, you know what I'm talking about. You, know, you go into the store, you find that soap aisle that's got like the nice, uh, like the goat's milk soaps and all that. They have that just that incredible smell to them. That's kind of the vibe that you get from these. But uh, yeah, there's a little bit of spice in your back of the throat. It's not like really piquant or anything. It's not like real peppery or anything. It's, like I said, it's kind of like a spiced apple. Which means it's got this kind of almost a clove kind of a vibe where it almost kind of wants it's, it almost feels like it's trying to numb your tongue a little bit. Just a little bit. Overall, though, flavors are definitely interesting. The biggest issue with this, though, is the fact that it's a barber pole. You've got two different wrappers burning at two different rates. So if you're going to try these, definitely uh, make sure you got a good full lighter because you're going to be doing touch ups all the time because that uh, Connecticut wrapper does not burn at the same rate that the Maduro does. It tries, but uh, overall, there's a reason why barber poles are kind of an oddball. As far as drink pairings, I want to see like a nice quality tea or perhaps a Kentucky bourbon. Maybe. Anyway, that's pretty much all she wrote on that one. A very interesting cigar with some very weird burn issues that are completely understandable. You know what it is. Overall, though, uh, yeah, definitely give them a shot if you get a chance. I don't know if I'd necessarily want to throw money at a whole box of them, but definitely a five-pack would be great. Anyway, not much else to say on this one. If you like this review or any other review, like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know if you had a different experience or if there's anything you want to see reviewed. Or not, check out my Twitch streams, Sunday to Friday night, 10 to 2 a.m. Recorded for mm, a couple days afterwards. I say a couple days because I stream six days a week, so some of them get it uh, kind of bumped down the line. But typically I record for about two weeks. Anyway, that's pretty much all I got. I'll see you next time.